okay, this is to um, come up with a way when you're gradient meshing to do texture like you see right in here, okay? So I am going to um, make that happen, all right? So how I'm going to approach this is, of course, integrating Photoshop with Illustrator. So what I need to do first is I would like to have the shape of this um, mesh right here, okay? So I'm going to take that mesh right there and I'm going to um, click the radio button for it. Um, let me put those panels up a little bit bigger so we can see what Brian is doing. So now what I want to do is get the outer path of this, which is not there. So I want to just have a path. So I'm going to go to Object, Path, and offset that path by negative 0.001. And now you can see how I've actually gotten a path back that is so close to the original shape that it might as well be the original shape. Now what I want to do is copy that path. But before I copy that path and paste it into Photoshop as a path, I have to tell Illustrator to recognize the path, which then Photoshop will allow me to paste it in Photoshop as a path. So before you go to copy this and then paste it into Photoshop, go to the Illustrator Preferences, down to Clipboard Handling. Make sure that AICB is checked, standing for Adobe Illustrator Clipboard, and Preserving Paths is the button that's on. And then we can click OK. Now when I hit Command or Control C, I know that when I go into Photoshop and start, um, this is, I did a little practice version of this, which I'm going to delete. And I'm going to delete that out. So I opened up a blank Photoshop page. Okay, just a blank Photoshop page. I'll shut everything else off and I'll just redo what I just did. So now I'm going to hit Command or Control V and it's going to paste in a work path. But now I get this window to come up. Now if I hadn't turned on the Adobe Illustrator clipboard preferences, all I would get would be pixels. I don't want pixels, I want a path. So I'm going to say OK. Now the work path comes in and you can see it's perfect. OK. Now I'm not going to alter it or change it, so I'm going to double click it and I'm just going to just name it number one. Just whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to hold Command or Control and convert that by clicking on the icon in the path palette, as you can see, to a selection. I'm going to make a new layer. That layer is now transparent. You can see it's transparent, okay? And I'm going to fill it with black. So black is in my foreground color. You can see it's all the way down to the bottom right. That's the foreground. That's the background color. And I'm going to hit Alt or Option Backspace or Alt Delete. So now you can see that I have filled that. Now I want to Command or Control D to deselect it. Okay, now I'm not going to ruin this shape. I never ruin a uh, original shape, even though it was easy to make. I'm going to click on the upper shape and go to Filter, and I'm going to try a couple things. I can go to Pixelate and Mesotint. Now in Mesotint, I can go Fine Dots, Grainy Dots, or Coarse Dots. And I'm going to say Coarse Dots this time. But I don't like what I got. It's too dense. I actually want the white areas. So in order to make this easier to grab those shapes, the white shapes, I'm going to invert this. So not inverse, invert. So I go to Image, um, Adjustments, down to Invert, which is Command or Control I. Now I want those shapes, and I like the randomness of those shapes. It looks like the texture that's on the pepper. OK, so what do you do? Well, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to get the W key, um, which is the magic wand tool. Now, with contiguous off, contiguous is right there, see it? If I have contiguous on and I click one of the black shapes, I'll only get one shape. I don't want it. I want all the shapes. So I'm going to turn that off and select that, and now I have all the shapes. Now, how do I know I have all the shapes? I am going to turn off my texture, and you can see that it's now a bunch of selections. So now, I what am I going to do with selections? Well, I have to convert them to paths. So if I click away in the path palette, leave this, I'll zoom in, leave it as a selection, okay, and now go to make a work path from the selection, I can go to the lowest tolerance that's allowed, which is, I believe, 2.0. I'll make it 1, but it'll probably be 2. Now, 
I have paths, which are so cool. Because now, with all of those paths selected, I can hit Command or Control C. I can go back to Illustrator. Watch how neat this is. And I can make my Illustrator page come up. Now, I'm going to turn off number one here so you don't see it. Okay, and I'm going to turn off this path so we don't need it right now. And I'm going to turn on the clicky copy above. Now, I'm going to leave it selected right here. See in the layer palette, it's selected right there, and the parent layer is on. I'm going to hit Command V or Control V to paste, and it pastes, it's going to paste it in. I get a choice. I want a compound path, and for this case, I'm just going to have a faster one, which is less memory. So now I have it come in. Now I can hit the E key, which is the transform tool. I'll move it away and I'll move it back and you can see how I can line it up exactly to where it came from on the shape because I used this shape to fill the shape in Photoshop, right? Right. Now I have a bunch of paths, except there's nothing in them. Now I want a dark green. Okay, so I'm going to hit the eyedropper. Let me turn off the clicky copy so you can see when I zoom in that they're empty. Okay, now I want a dark green, so I'm going to turn this on, which is the clicky copy, and I'm going to grab this dark, dark green. See how the fill is in the front here in the tool palette? I'm going to click. Now, I'm going to turn off the clicky copy, and I'm going to deselect by clicking with the direct selection tool, and now I have these really cool shapes right there. Those are beautiful and random and dark. Now, watch how I have them above the shape I'm playing with, which is number one, and now I have them, except they're way too much. They're just too intense. So I select them by clicking the radial button for it, and I turn the opacity, which is right there at 100%, down to about 20. Let's try 20 to start with. Okay, now I'm going to hit the return key and click away from them, and you can see how I have some cool texture on this. Now if I click the clicky copy, you can see I'm getting close to the texture that I want. All right, now I may go back and do it again, but this time use different kinds of things in Photoshop. But I think that's fine. I think that's actually fine. It's too dark, but it's fine. So instead of 20%, let's go down to 10% and hit the return key. Now look at how neat that looks. That is just beautiful texture. Now I have to delete some of them off of the light area because you can see on the clicky copy how they really don't show up a ton in the light area. Now if I wanted to take the time I could select only those in that area and start turning down the opacity to like one or two percent. Okay, That might take a little bit too much time. So if I zoom in you can see how I can mark key. Whoops! Guess what? Mr. Sorial did not have the number one mesh locked. Now I can marquee some of those shapes inside of there. See that? And then I can hold the shift key and marquee a couple more. Then I can hold the shift key, still hold the shift key and get more. Get more, whoops, let me Z back. Hold the shift key and start my drag so I'm not touching any of those shapes. And now I'll turn those, where's my opacity? The reason why opacity is not showing up, and I'll tell you why, is because some of the points are open and some of the points are closed. So what I need to do, and I should have told you this, is when I am actually marquee,ing I'm going to hold Alt or Option. Now what does that do? That actually uh, makes all the points turn solid. Now I can hold the Shift key and the Option or Alt key and grab some of these points here, some of these points here. You can see that just by touching some of those shapes, I have the opacity right above me. It's now visible. But by holding Alt or Option, it allows me, I'm not finishing my sentence, it allows me to grab um, all of these points. And by just touching some of them, all the points will turn dark. If some of those points were open points, then I wouldn't have opacity available to me. Now I'm going to turn that down to 10%. And you can see just how nicely that works. Whoops. You know uh, what I forgot to tell you? Let me, I'm going to Z back. Um, I turned the, I have to tell you this, I turned the group down to 20%. Now, 
if I turn these individual shapes down to 10%, that means, I hope you understand what I'm gonna say, I am starting out at 20% opacity. If I turn it down to only 10% opacity, it's hard to explain, but I'm actually going down to, to where you can't even see them. So uh, I'm probably explaining way too much here. If I have the group selected and I've turned the opacity down, I have to only turn, if I want these to go down another few percentage points, okay, then I'm going to take this down to about 80%. So I'm 80% of 20%. Do you follow what I mean? So now I'm going to hit the return key and you can see how now I've lessened those. Now, if I hold alt or option, I can grab maybe the center ones right there and let's go down to maybe 60% just on those. Now look at what I've done. I've almost made them disappear here. I'm holding alt or option and I'm grabbing those and let's go down to again 60% of the 20%. So now you can see how I've backed off and now that looks better. That area looks better than this area. Now there are some times that you're gonna to wanna to go in and I'm gonna do this quickly because it's just a demo, but you're gonna to wanna to go in and take some of these shapes like I'm clicking on right there and hit the delete and just delete them out, okay? Now again, start in a negative area, Brian, hold Alt or Option, click, hold Shift, make a big box, and now I can go down to about 80 or 70% there and you can see what I've done is pretty good. So now I've lessened the opacity there so now that looks more natural, if that's a good way to say it. So I could zoom in. Some of those are just too much and you have to just be um, artistic in what you're trying to delete or take away. And that works really well. So you can see now how I've deleted off some of those points in that area and that texture. Let me zoom in and get it like this. Look at it without the texture. Looks like a piece of rubber. And now with the texture, looks more natural. And that's how to do it. I hope that helped.